Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Chrissy Bush. And we've titled this show Far Away Christmas. Because some people look forward to spending time with family and friends over Christmas, but for others, it's a time they dread because they're far away from their loved ones. So let's think of people like the, you know, people in the armed forces, those in prison, people who are working away from home to make ends meet and support their family, and also those who can't be with a loved one again because that loved one has died, and also those who are simply lonely. Maybe they've broken up with someone, maybe they're just single. So how can you cope over Christmas if you fall into one of these categories? My show tonight will hopefully help you look at the brighter side of things because we have some special guests here tonight. We have Councillor Andrew Bernard, who also worked as a probation officer for 21 years, and also ex-prisoner Michael Reed, who spent a few Christmases behind bars, so he'll be telling us how he coped. And and we also later on have NHS manager and consultant Hazel Brown to shed some light on bereavement and how families can cope if they've lost someone. Later on as well, I'll also be talking about how you can help out a lonely friend or family member. So if you want to get involved in this show, you can email me chris at chrissybisha.tv. And if you'd like to talk as well, you can give us a call on 020-7686-6300. The lines are open for you if you'd like to call in. So let's welcome, first of all, Andrew and also Michael. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. Now, you've both been on the show before, not on the same show, mm -hmm. but at various times. Thank you both for coming on again. Now, Andrew, you, you're a counsellor. Yeah. How long have you been a counsellor for? Uh, well, I was a probation officer for 21 years, and that was the foundation of my counselling work. Mm. Uh, I did a master's degree in social work and a degree in psychology. And uh, so I was counselling people all throughout that. And right, then I, okay. I finally, uh, last year, decided to get a counselling qualification to actually top and tail it so I could mm -hmm. set up my own private practice. So I practice right. in, uh, in North London now, have my own private practice. Okay. And Michael, you were in prison for how long? Uh, five years, five months. For what? Arm robbery, <laughs> kidnap, incitement to rob, possession of firearms. A few quite things. a list. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, you two are having a quite an interesting chat in the green room, so I hope you're going to remember to talk about all this on the show now. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try. Yeah, I'm so we're try. talking about people that, that are, you know, those that are in prison, how they feel and how they can cope, but also the families of those that, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're at home without this person. So first of all, Michael, what's it like being in prison at Christmas? Um, I'd say it's one of the toughest times, definitely, being in prison. Um, I am speaking to Andy earlier, saying, you know, that normally... Prisoners have that swagger that you don't want anything to break you, to crack that veneer. Mm. You know, you put on that, that tough guy image. And most of the time, you know, you really do get through it. Mm. But I would say Christmas is one of the hardest times, one of the toughest times. It was for me, definitely. I come from a very big family, a very, you know, close-knit, mm. big Christmas. Um, don't have turkey, but chicken and everything else. And, you know, having those times when you're away and... Especially for instance, to prison food, going up to receiving your turkey, you just slice this dry horrible bird. <laughs> you know, it, it just it just bring back you know memories of of, of home, and mm. it, it was it was a tough time, definitely. Mm. Yeah. Definitely was was one of the hardest times. And how yeah. did you cope? Um, just try to do the best that you can. Try to mark it in some in some special way. Try to do something. Try to do something fun. Something you know. Sometimes you do something that was wrong. We we make hooch and. Pardon? Hooch, um, home, um, homemade alcohol. You know, that's yeah, yeah. not what yeah, you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay. Hooch okay. and, you know, not that the prison guards would turn a blind eye, but it was Christmas and it wasn't so strict, it wasn't so on you, you know. You, you tried to do something. You said something you know, earlier, you said about how you tried to make Christmas special, no matter what you, you had a thing yeah. you did. You know, it was Christmas at the end of the day. I remember um, one year... Me and a friend that was in, inside together, we went one to other people's cells and just taking the courts off of them and waking them up. It's Christmas. It's Christmas. You know, we didn't really have anything to be celebrating. We're inside, just putting Christmas away. But you still have to try and make the best of it that you can. There was a certain prison that we was allowed to cook our own food. So mm -hmm. definitely on that day, it was one of the, the biggest meals, mm -hmm. the best meals that you could manage. It was, you just really just tried I don't know any other way Were to really explain it. Were prisoners sort of friendly to each other on that day as well? Yeah, I would say that. I would say that, we, you know, you put things aside. Things that you wouldn't normally let, let slide, you'd let slide. It's Christmas. You know, nobody wanted to end up in the block on that day. Nobody wanted to end up, you know... You didn't want that on that day. It was Christmas Day. You know, there were some people that you find them a bit grumpy. You know, they're down, yeah, they're, they're yeah. depressed, I suppose. Mm -hmm. you, you stay out of their way. You just, you know, things would... Normally go a bit smoother on Christmas. I'm just trying to remember because it's been about another. It's been five years since I was there. So, yeah. but yeah, I do, I do remember it basically being, you know, I wouldn't say a nice time. 
It was yeah, goodwill to all men. Okay. Say, there, there was goodwill inside, yeah. So, Andrew, in your 21 years yeah. as a probation officer, you mm. might, well, you've spent a lot of Christmases. Were you there ever there on Christmas Day? It's no, like, no, I've, I visited. Off. I always, I always made sure I had Christmas Day off. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I did a lot of visits. Uh, I think over 80 odd prisons up from Durham to Dartmoor and all mm. points north, south, east, and west. And uh, I'd picking up on what Michael just said. The point being that uh, some of the prisoners. Uh, they could breathe through their sentence, some didn't, but those that didn't, I think everyone found Christmas a tough time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, even people who weren't religious or weren't particularly of the Christian faith or whatever, it was that time of year when they were acutely reminded that family wasn't there. And you said, Michael, earlier on that Christmas mm -hmm. for you, prison for you was partly about being the first time you've been away from your family. Yeah, you know, oh, I have a very, very big family, extended family, cousins, aunts, uncles, and Christmas would always be a time of family. Mm. And being away was like one of the first times that I didn't have that. And I felt... It's not as if you're away because you're on holiday or enjoying yeah, yourself it, no, somewhere it wasn't, or something. You, I'd, I'd never done that, never gone away on holiday over Christmas yeah. or anything like that. So that was literally my first Christmas away. And that was the circumstances of it. So it was, mm -hmm. it was, pretty, it was pretty hard. You know, um, I, just thinking about how it was for the family as well. Yeah. Not, not having me there. Yeah. I, I can't mm. speak for them, but I'm sure, you know, I wasn't mm. um, despised. I was missed. Mm -hmm. I, I think so anyway. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, yeah. well you, sure. you, good point, because the other side of it was I would see the family side of yeah. it and visit yeah. the families. And, and there's, a, there's a, a mixture of feelings between... Anything from, I you know, I really miss this person to I'm really glad he's away. It's the mm -hmm. first time we've, we've not had that person you know, getting drunk and wrecking yeah, our Christmas. Yeah. And, and also, if and they miss guilt them... guilt probably guilt, attached to that. A guilt <laughs> attack, absolutely. Yeah. And sometimes um, anger, you know. Uh, we were a good family, we had things going for us, and then he went and did X, Y, or Z. Mm -hmm. And now he's in prison, and now we've got a very difficult Christmas ahead of us. So um, the kind of bright, shiny, tinsley side of Christmas has got a sort of dark underside for some, and uh, mm -hmm. could be quite uh, uh, hard for both the prisoner and the family to manage. Okay, and from a professional point of view, what's, what's the best way for an inmate maybe to cope over this time, would you say? Well, you know, I feel I'm, you know, teaching Michael here, but I, I, I think you could probably tell me about this. I feel, for me, I would, I would get into preparation for the, for the prisoner who is kind mm. of going, I'm okay, I'm okay. I say, well, this will be your first Christmas away from home. Right. Just to let them know it's coming. So that would come quite early on. Or, you know, I could do that in the first few months of the sentence, saying, well, December, Christmas will be the first time you're, you're going to be away from home. And then ask them how they're going to mark it. And they would just say, oh, you know, I'm not going to do anything different. It's just another day for me. Mm. And I'd yeah, say, I heard that a lot. Just another day. Yeah. It's just another day. But it wasn't. It wasn't. Until it, it came. Yeah. Exactly. You, you would hear that. You would hear people talk about it's just another day. Even on that day. Oh, why are you, cele why are you, why are you celebrating? Why are you, why are you doing that? It's just another day. It's just another day. But on one yeah. side, in one sense, it is just another day. But if you know you what you're normally doing on that yeah. day, then even you just, that's what yeah. you miss. It not is the day just it's another like, day, but yeah. it's not. It's Christmas. Mm. It's, I don't know. It's, it's like your birthday. It's, it's mm. just another day. Yeah, sure, but it's, yeah. it's not. It's a special it day. It feels different. I've got yeah. to say, I'd say you, you say from here, say in the middle of April, it'll be just another day. But on December the 25th, when you wake up, it won't feel like just mm. another day. It'll feel like a day you're not at home. So what are you going to do? So mentally prepare for that. Mentally yeah. prepare. And uh, some guys want to just put their head under the duvet and hide, but the prison rules don't let you do that. So um, I said, well, you're going to have to get up and mm -hmm. do something. And um, so we talk about planning the day, because part of the prison day is structured, as Michael would say, it's very structured, but there will be free time within that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think about things like, are there things you can bring with you, you can get hold of, like photographs that you can have to remind you of, yeah. of your family? Um, is there any way, are there any letters you can have? That can, can they send you letters beforehand? Can you ask them to send you Christmas cards? Make sure your Christmas cards, the family's cards, arrive before Christmas yeah, Day. Yeah, they can maybe so read them, them Read Christmas them again, Day. yeah. And uh, that kind of balance between being alone and feeling very lonely, and it's very interesting what you said, Michael, because it's, there you are in a prison wing full of loads of other guys, mm -hmm. and many of them are feeling lonely, and the paradox is, they're next to each other, each feeling lonely, and I'd say, well, you may not be the only lonely guy in the wing. If you know someone else is lonely, go and say hello. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's, I'm always very conscious, it's very easy for me to sit outside of the probation hall saying, do this, do that, try this, try that. But I feel that one of my jobs was to try and give them something positive to hold on to, and not just mope, 
uh, mm -hmm. because m moping can lead to self-pity and self-pity is really destructive. As a counsellor, yeah. that's a thing I'd listen out for. If I hear self-pity, I'm onto it in a flash because it's very destructive. Mm -hmm. What about those in, in the armed forces as well? Because that must be a hard hard time as well for, well, for the yeah. wives that are left behind for them because you know they don't not seeing their kids, they can't give gifts to their, their children. Well, so funny enough, hard. I mean, I've, I had another take on this, um, a, a completely different take on this from, uh, I've got an older brother, Malcolm, who spent uh, over 20 years in the Navy. And uh, he said that Christmas, one Christmas in about 1963, he was on board a boat in the, I think it was a China Sea. Uh, and um, what they did at Christmas, they had this thing uh, where they had turned the rules upside down. And it was the officers, the senior officers, would serve the ratings, the lowest people on the, on the ladder, mm. so to speak. Yeah. And, and that echoes a tradition which goes back a long, 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 long way. That's hundreds of years old. old. It's called Lord of Misrule, they used to call it mm -hmm. in medieval times, where they'd appoint someone and that person would conduct all the festivities, but the rule would be the master of the house would have to serve the servants. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said that made it, you know, it, it could make it great fun. Um, but behind it all, I felt, I feel behind all that kind of stuff, is a way of kind of filling the day with yeah. something positive mm -hmm. to take your mind off the <laughs> fact you're not That's weird. the thing. I think that's, that's the thing that you have to do yeah. because otherwise you're just going to go crazy if you're just moping and thinking about it. Mm -hmm. But Michael, how was your first Christmas out of prison? Oh, the first one out of prison. Um, it was He's lost for words. <laughs> <laughs> the first Christmas out of prison, and you know, just, just being out full stop, I got out in 16th of November. So Christmas wasn't that far away yeah. and it was something I was really looking forward to. And um, it wasn't so much just the Christmas, it was also the New Year's. Mm. The New Year's um, the New Year's was especially um, special because that's the day that um, I met my, my wife. Oh! That was the first time that I met oh, her. Oh, that's so sweet. Um, so, just sitting over there, by the way, watching yeah. you loving me. So Christmas <laughs> is special, but I will always remember New Year's. Yeah. I think I remember that a little bit more than the Christmas. But you, you decided at that point that you were going to start again, didn't you? Yeah, That definitely. you weren't going to go back to what you used to do, yeah. that things were going to start afresh. So that was something for you to look forward to as well. I, I, when I came out, you know, I decided already from the time that I got out that I wasn't going back. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going back. You know, I've heard so many things, so many people talk, I'm, I'm going to be smart, I'm going to be a smarter criminal, I'm going to be, you know... So dumb. <laughs> And I just said to myself, look, the only way that I'll never go back to prison is if I don't do crime. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's the only way. I might end up defending myself and, you know, something could happen. And, OK, I'll be able to deal with that. But if I knew that I went back to prison for a crime or something that I could have avoided, mm -hmm. I thought that, no, it would do my head in. So I, I just said but You're that. doing really well. You've been doing mm -hmm. well for the last so five, years. five years. You've got yeah. your projects that you're doing, which I yeah. won't talk about today, but maybe you'll come back another time. Definitely. No, I'm sure. How, how things are progressing. I'm sure if I don't come back, you'll see me on the news or on, I don't know, some sort of news channel or something about that. Maybe Dragon's Den. Yeah. Something positive, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, let's right. just clarify that. Yeah, no, definitely something positive, yeah. All right. But um, just before I, I forget what I was saying, I'll just remember um, what we were saying before about a criminal that I was inside with. Uh, yeah. uh, he was a millionaire, you know, and made a lot of money mm. through crime. And he was a very, you know, um, I would say horrible criminal. It was, you know, very tough. But I remember him saying to me, Michael, if I could give it all back, just to have Christmas with my kids, I would. I'd give it all there back just go. to have Christmas with my kids. <laughs> Michael, thank you very much. That's a good thing for us to think about, leaving on that note. All the best. Thank you and very much. And I know we're going to be hearing from you very Definitely soon. Definitely will. Definitely <laughs> thank will. you very much. Andrew, you're going to stay with us because okay. after the break, we're going to have NHS manager and consultant Hazel Brown with us. And we're going to be talking about bereavement and a few other things as well. So join us after this. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter.
Welcome back. And if you've just joined us, the topic for tonight is far away Christmas. So we've spoken about inmates and how they cope in prison during Christmas and also the families as well. But how about if you've actually lost someone, you're bereaved, you're missing a family member, maybe it's your first Christmas without them and you're not really sure how you're going to cope. Obviously, we had that terrible thing that happened in America with that shooting, those poor parents having to spend Christmas without their children. So it's a very, very awful time. But how can a person actually cope with this? So I've got Hazel Brown with me. Good evening. Hello, Chris. You've been on before as well, but yes, talking about I something have. completely different. Yes, I but have. now that's we're going to talk about something, you know, that's, you know, hopefully will help some people tonight. I mean, it's never going to be easy, is it? No. First of all. No, it's always mm. a difficult time, but it's a coping mechanism that you put in place. Yeah. Helps you through. So, in your years in, in the NHS, you've obviously probably seen a lot of people, bereaved people, Lots families. Of bereaved patients, families. Because death and dying is a process that happens on a daily basis, basically mm. in the hospitals. All the festive times, like Christmas times, it happens, it doesn't stop. Yeah. And it's coping, advising, supporting patients through, supporting mm. relatives through as much as possible, referring to Andy's counselling services, for example. Yeah. But it's, it's a normal process for us that work in that environment. Mm. But how do you actually deal with it is more important. Okay, and how do you deal with it then? How, how do you, would you advise people, say if it's their first Christmas without that, that person? It's to acknowledge that a person has had a loss. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole bereavement process is a loss of a loved one, a pet, what have you, that's valuable, that's important mm -hmm. to that person. So. You know, we need to sort of remember that loss is loss and never underestimate what a person is actually going through. But putting things in place such as counselling services, mm -hmm. support services like packages of care from social services, um, asking the person to stay with a friend, with a family, so they're not going to be on their own. Um, giving further advice, asking the person to reminisce really on you know, the good times they've had with that yeah. loved one. Um, photographs, keep momentums close to them, basically, to talk about it. But it's not a situation that people can overcome night to day. It, it, takes, takes, it takes time. It does time. take time. And I each mean. individual time is different. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure absolutely. You agree yeah. With it. yeah, there's a lovely line I read uh, at the weekend. It was a, the mother of a soldier who had been killed in Afghanistan. And she'd been through the grieving process and, yeah. and she said something like, um, the, the heart must be allowed to grieve, then the head will understand. And it was like allowing yourself to grieve to eventually you can come to a place where you can come to accept it. But first, Absolutely. I think you're dead right. You have to, the person has to acknowledge the loss. There's no yes. point in saying, let's just look on the bright side and let's just move no. on. No. Acknowledge the loss, then in time, you can look at the other side and enjoy absolutely, the memory. Absolutely, absolutely. And the grieving process, you know, can take years, it can take months, mm -hmm. it can take forever. You know, it's, it's, it's a different place for different people. Um, we normally use the model Kubler-Ross. I'm not sure if you heard about no. Kubler-Ross. Mm -hmm. Kubler-Ross was a famous medical doctor that did a lot of work on death and dying. And part of her work devised a model on the whole grieving process. Mm -hmm. And initially, when someone has had a loss, you know, um, whether it's a debt or of a family friend, um, member, an animal, as I mm -hmm. said, you go through the different steps. The first step will be shock. No, this hasn't happened to me. You know, why has this happened? And the second step will be anger blaming someone else for what has happened, maybe blaming God, blaming that person who they've lost, etc. Mm -hmm. The next step will be depression, you know, and that can take a long time, a short time, and the person can move back from a different step to another yeah. step, etc. Then we go on to the next step, yeah. which will be bargaining, trying to say, okay, it is what it is, it's happened, and um, maybe I need to move on. And the last step will be acceptance, so the person is beginning to move on. But as I pointed out, it can take any amount of time. There's no set time. Each person is different. Mm. And through the whole cycle, you may revert from step five back to step yeah. one. Yes. Do you often find this yeah. in your Oh, yeah, they go backwards counseling. and forwards. And, mm -hmm. and I try and get rid of the notion. 
I think it's a very helpful idea you said the stages because it makes sense to the person when you explain there are stages. Yes. And I get rid of the notion of getting over it. They yeah. think, I've got to get over it or I'm not getting over it. And, and I try and get into the idea of living alongside it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's, there's something in your landscape now which is quite painful. And right now it's very hard to visit that place. Yes. But there'll come a time you can visit it yes, and be okay course. with it. But right now it's very painful. So you learn to live with it in your landscape. Yes. Rather than yes. I've got to put it behind me, I'll, no. I should be getting, no. I should be getting over it, which can be an, an additional burden for someone who's trying to grieve. Yes, yeah. and it's also important, sorry, Chrissy, for mm -hmm. that person to acknowledge that that's their loss and it's their space mm -hmm. to grieve, and it's okay, it's okay to grieve, you know, yeah. and we all have it to. It is, and I think sometimes at Christmas time as well, maybe. I mean, if this person does decide to celebrate Christmas and have you know the rest of the family around, I think it's important to talk about the person yeah. as well because yes. so, what some, I think sometimes people tend to do is like let's not talk about it let's not upset anyone oh, but maybe yes. people are dying to talk about the person yes. because it makes them feel better they want to they want to express themselves they want to say how much they miss the person or if this person was here they'd love this I don't know this cranberry sauce or something that just yes. to talk yes. because a lot of yeah. people feeling the same thing and then at least if you're all together you can you help each other through and yes. behind that silence sometimes it's just a simple fear of the tears yeah. it's a simple fear that if I, if I mention that they like cranberry sauce, then they're going to start crying. And to which point is, well, have a cry. And if they do, yeah. Then have a cry and then, then, okay. then have a laugh. Because you have okay. a giggle, don't yeah, you? Yeah. You start yeah. to remember the funny things. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let laughter come, then let the tears out, and it's okay. And I think in this country, we have a very good, we mustn't cry. It's okay, you know, mm -hmm. tears never mm -hmm. killed anyone. Just carry on, you know, mm -hmm. it's yeah. okay. It's avoidance sometimes. And we've got patience sometimes that literally refusing to be discharged from the hospital because they've lost a loved one previously, whether it's a few months ago, this is the first Christmas on their own. Mm. So they are literally begging, can I remain for Christmas? We do know that the NHS is not run as a hotel today, <laughs> basically. Yeah. So it's, it's having to support that person, negotiate with that person, that it's not the right place to be in hospital. We do understand your position. Can you not spend Christmas with a friend or a neighbour? Um, can we offer you some support over Christmas, like social because services? Because support is there, etc. isn't it? So it's not like the person is completely on their own, even if they don't have other family members, but there, there is they support, the support there for them. Yeah, yes. Gosh. So Andrew, give us some, maybe you can give us some maybe pointers that to help bereaved families at this time. Well, I think the first thing is, is, is not to be afraid of the tears. Uh, mm -hmm and not to be afraid of the sadness, mm -hmm. because it's a real thing. You've lost somebody, and that's going to hurt. Um, and know that it will take time. You know, yeah. It depends. See, if, if it's very recent loss, it's going to be more, more painful than a distant loss. But I can think about my mum and dad. Now they died some time back, and me and my brothers and sisters, we meet, we meet up, and we can have a laugh. I'm going to meet them tomorrow, and we can have a, a laugh mm -hmm. about what used to go on at Christmas. But that would have been very hard to do in the first few months after. It would have been a yeah. bit raw. And there's another thing I think which uh, kind of is, is worth mentioning is the manner of the loss. If it's an expected loss, it tends to be, as a very general rule, I don't know if you agree, Hazel, yes. more easy to manage yes. than if it's a sudden mm -hmm. shock of a loss, a sudden level trauma. Of preparedness. Isn't preparedness it? is yeah. all. And, mm -hmm. and, and one of the ways, if we're talking about memories at Christmas, then mm -hmm. I'd say that what we can, what can happen is if it's a sudden loss, is we remember that person by the way they died, like if they died in a car crash or they died in a, some other terrible way, we might say, oh, that's, that's John, and he, he's the guy who died in a car crash. And I think it's really important that we get beyond that, and the, per the way the person died is not the person. Mm -hmm. That's just a few moments of their life. Their life is much bigger and wider than that. Yeah. And, and if we can just stop the That was John, the wonderful dad. John, the wonderful dad, yeah. the brother, the irritating <laughs> cousin, you know, the yeah. annoying, you know, what an Arsenal mm. fan or whatever, mm. you know. It's all that kind of thing. So just mm. getting the person around and enjoying them in the round mm. and not, not getting too focused on the way they died. What about celebrating their lives then at Christmas? Because that could, that could, that yeah, could help. You can. And I think that well. comes after a while. That's a way down, mm. that's your acceptance yes. stage and beyond, I would say. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That comes after acceptance, yep. Yeah. Yeah, you reach a point where maybe you can say, here's a... If it were my dad's say, I'd, I'd be raising a glass of whiskey. I'd go, yeah, glass of whiskey to my dad, you know. Mm -hmm. And that, it brings a smile to my face, just thinking about yeah. it, it's, it's okay. Um, so you can, and I think that's okay, you know. And, 
and and of course once again you you celebrate and, and then the tears come again yeah and the, but the tears are okay they're tears you know, smiley tears and they're okay mm. you know i mean i remember when i lost my grandma I was very very close to her and she actually died in my arms um when she was she was quite unlucky i got i managed to get there in time to, to sort of talk to her and you know say goodbye but it's like at first I just kept replaying in my head how it happened because mm. she was very ill and she was kind of vomiting blood and it was quite awful mm. seeing. Mm. And for a few for a few months, that's all I could remember. Yeah. I, I just kept remembering that day. I just remember her gasping for breath and all those all horrible, horrible things in my mind. But I found that with time, I just I started to forget those images. They started mm. to be sort of less frequent in my mind, sure. and I was remembering mm. funny things that used to happen. Yes. And now, you know, I can talk about her and not feel that that pain anymore. So it does. It does ease with time. It's not that you're you're going to be stuck in that place. Sure. Although some people, like some you say, some people are. are. So maybe the people like that, mm. they need to get some definitely yeah. to get counselling and stuff. But yeah. you no, know, there is hope to move on and not not feel those that terrible pain anymore that you were yes. before. Yes, I actually lost um, a loved one, my grandmother. We were very close, but and she died at the end of the year, so a few days after Christmas. Mm. But what helped me through was remembering the good times we shared, the memories, the laughter, and, you know, she was all about fun, really. Yeah. So there was always something to talk about and something to laugh about. But also, during her period of illness prior to her death, I actually took a sabbatical and took that time to spend time with her. Yeah. So yeah. I would go to the hospitals for her chemotherapy appointments, I would lie in the bed with her while she was having her chemotherapy. I would paint her nails and the colors mm -hmm. she wanted. So for me, that was special moments. And it also helped me during that time to prepare myself yeah. that she's not going to live forever. None of us do, mm -hmm. you know, and there is going to come a time when she's not going to be around. So look at the good side, look at the good things and hold on to those good things. Yeah. And that's helped me through. And okay. sometimes I pass it on to patients also that I deal with. Mm -hmm. mm. That's really good. So, but if there is anyone watching tonight and you are sort of feeling really down, maybe the person hasn't even passed away this year, maybe it's like been a few years and you're still feeling mm -hmm. that pain and you want to talk, or all the, all the information about my guest tonight will be on the website, chriscbshow.tv. And you can also email me if you'd like to chat as well, chris at chrissybshow.tv. Andy, thank you so much Pleasure. again for coming on. Thanks for your valuable advice. Thank you. Hazel, you're going to stay with me because we're yes. going to be offering some advice to the ladies who have a friend that maybe is going through a hard time because she's single and she feels a bit lonely at this time of year. So let's just give a few, a few pointers. Okay, so join us after this. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back. Now, before we talk about how to help out a mate who's single and feeling a bit lonely during this festive period, let's take a look at this video where we visited Dr. French Care Home. Um, and I think it's very important to also look in on your elderly neighbours at this time of year because there's many that are all by themselves. They don't have anyone you know, to talk to, maybe their family and friends. They don't, they don't visit them anymore. So, so it would be really, really good to check in on them over Christmas. Let's take a look at this first. Today we're at the Dr. French Care Home and we're here today to spread a little festive cheer because we've got a little surprise for the people, haven't we, Bob? Yeah, we're going to be giving them mince pies, we're going to be having someone singing to them, old classics by Frank Starr. Baked a cake as well, my famous pineapple cake, which you can find on my YouTube channel, but more on that later. Joanna, what are you going to do? Are you going to do a little dance or something? Perhaps. <laughs> well, you have to stay tuned to check out then. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to go and just prep the food for now and then you can join us in there and we're going to meet Frank Starr as well who's going to be singing some old classics and Frank Sinatra songs, right? So, see you in there! Where the treetops glisten And children listen To hear we're heating up the mince pies and we're just plating everything up and then we're going to take it through to them. So we're going to give it some stuff here, they're really good, the carrots here. They look like they're 
love the old people a lot, so we'll give them some advice as well. Oh yeah, this is my pineapple cake that I made last night, so hopefully the chaps in there will like it. And if they don't, we'll eat it. Chrissy B show we're bringing you some mince pies and some biscuits and stuff and we're gonna if you want a hand massage we're gonna come over and give it to you and the show we're actually putting together is all to do with giving so we'd like to sort of hear your take on that and you know why it's important to be a giving person and stuff like that and if things have changed over the years as well we'll also be having Frank, Frank Starr who will be singing some you know classic tunes to you so I'll hand it over to Frank now. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, ladies. What's supposed to be happening now? Well, we're going to give you some cake and stuff. We're going to go around and also give some hand mass massages if you want, just to spend the afternoon with you, really. Oh, and then the en and Frank's going to do the entertainment. Say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm dreaming of a wild Christmas. With every Christmas card we ride. I think it's taken a shine to her. Yeah. Yes, this way. <laughs> and Christmas Day Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Oh, no. Is that the mince pies? Alright. Oh, oh. Is that mince pies? Yeah, do you want two? Darling? Sleep. Wake her up. Yeah. It's really important for people to remember others at this time of year, or actually any time of year, because a lot of people are forgotten about. So if you do have a neighbour, for example, an elderly neighbour, and they really do appreciate it as well, because a lot of these people, they don't have anyone to talk to, you know, they're all by themselves, so I'm sure you could spread a little festive cheer. Okay, I'm here with Frank Starr, who's been singing some Frank Sinatra songs and some Christmas songs. Did you have fun, Frank? Wonderful, yeah. When are, you, uh, when are we coming back? That's what I'm going to say. No, you came all the way from Bristol to sing to these lovely people here. What, what puts that sort of joy in your heart to come here and do this for people? Oh, just actually, you touched on it then, the joy of making people happy, whatever age. Now, Frank, I noticed that you pay particular attention to one lovely lady. Did you take a shine to her or something? Well, if I... Singing to her an awful lot. Yes, if I perhaps was uh, a little bit younger, yes. I think that's our exit to leave now. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, thank you so much for joining us today and for singing to these lovely people. Very, very welcome, everybody. <laughs>the lovely Frank Starlin, all the, who came all the way from Bristol just to go to the home with us, so that was a really nice day. So please, as I said again, do check in on your elderly neighbours over this time. All right, so now let's talk about friends now that are by themselves, either maybe they've just broken up with someone and maybe they were spending each Christmas with that person or maybe they're just single and they're feeling lonely because there are single people that aren't lonely, aren't there? Yeah. There are people that are quite happy being single, but there's others that find it really hard during this yes, time. Yes, that's right. So how can we help a friend of ours? So the first thing that you know you should do is don't overdo it and make her feel like a charity case. No. So you want to show your concern for her, obviously, and to make sure she's okay. But if you make her feel that she is some kind of charity case, she's just going to feel even worse. Yes, she yes, it will be upsetting. Mm. <laughs> okay. So and also, if she doesn't want to talk about things, don't push her, don't force her to speak about anything. Because sometimes... I know, for example, I've been with friends that have been going for a hard time or they've just broken up with someone, and probably you have as well. Yes. They don't actually want to talk about it. They just want to, a lot do, because females, we do like to yes. talk, don't we? Yes, all. yes. But a lot of friends, they, they just don't want to talk. They just want to sort of forget about things and just... They have just you, want you... you to be there and support them and have a laugh or not have a laugh yeah. <laughs> and go at their pace, really. Mm -hmm. So it's about giving them that time and space, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You were telling me something really nice that you, you did for friends. Didn't you? Yeah. You over, over the years, um, I love having people around. I love entertaining. Mm -hmm. I love um, supporting people. So 
our house has always been open house mm -hmm. and we've had lots of friends that were international students so their families and loved ones were abroad yeah. and Christmas instead of they spending Christmas on their own we invited them over so I would cook dinner for about 20 or 25 people wow. um, lots of food so yeah. it's a lot of preparation but we had fun you know just taking time to give someone that attention, um, treat that person special, and um, they remember, they remember it. Mm -hmm. I enjoy the giving side of it, and it prevented that person from being on their own for Christmas. So that's so nice, because a lot it's of people just sharing. say, you know what, it's my Christmas, I'm, it's my break, I'm just gonna no. spend this with my family, and you know, sod yeah. everyone else, basically. Yes. So it's yeah. really nice to actually hear someone doing something Absolutely. like that. Because it does benefit you as well, because you feel happy for it. It's quite good. rewarding. It's quite rewarding. And as I said, it's something that I've always done over the years. And, mm. you know, we have immense fun, the laughter, you know, the cooking, the preparation. Do you do all the cooking, Hazel, by yourself? Most of the time, I do. <laughs> Are you the type of person that throws people out the kitchen when you're cooking? No, no, no. Are if you someone me offers, <laughs> I, you know, delegate tasks. But right. I do That's enjoy nice. cooking. I yeah. do enjoy cooking, but it's about having fun, it's about sharing at the same time yeah. and preventing that person from being on their own. If I had friends that were on their own and I didn't invite them, I would actually feel, hmm, really what are what she's yeah. doing now, yeah. and, you know, so it's better that I can have you share with me and have that's fun nice. with that's, me That's a good idea time. to do for someone then as well, yes. so like if you, you know, if your friend is, is she's, she's by herself, you can yeah. invite other people that are by themselves yes. not to match make or anything but just, no. you know, just to get everyone together although if it happens you know yeah it's like a celebration <laughs> and a party make a party yeah exactly mm. okay what you could do is well you can offer to go places with i've got a few notes here offer to go places with a like mm. shopping or for a medical appointment because it's yes. nice to have that support mm. you know network around you as always isn't Definitely. it when you are feeling a bit down or a bit, bit lonely offer to because it you know, to go shopping even sometimes it's really hard to do on your own. Yeah. If you're yeah. feeling that way. And it shows other people care, make you feel special. So even if you're feeling down and someone yeah. gives you that time of the day, you are special, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it just helps you to overcome what you're going through quicker. That's right. Mm -hmm. And if you do, for example, invite your friends, say, to a get together or a party or mm -hmm. something like that, Make sure you don't abandon her as well, because it may probably took a lot for her to maybe come out with Courage. you. And then, you know, she's maybe in a room full of people that she doesn't know very well. So don't go sort of swanning off and talking to everyone and leaving her by herself near the, near the buffet table or anything like that. Stay with her, yes. introduce her to people if she, you know, if she feels like talking and everything. But, you know, be there with her and support, and support her yes. as well. Yeah. Okay, let's see how else we can help a friend. Now, some, some people that are single they've got this thing about going to places on their own mm -hmm. so they don't like to go to the cinema by themselves they don't like to go to restaurants by themselves actually my mother-in-law she she always used to do this she still does actually she will go places by herself it doesn't bother her okay so you know she, she used to go cinema on her own she used to go to restaurants on her own and it really didn't she liked going by herself this is when she got divorced from from her last husband and she was fine with it, but for others, it's such a massive thing. They want to go out, but because they don't have anyone to go out with, mm. they just stay stuck indoors Isolate. and they feel even more depressed. Mm. So, you know, kind of talk to her and tell her, look, there's nothing wrong with going to the cinema on your own. You're just going to watch a film. Okay, it's nice yes. to hold someone's hand and share popcorn with, but if you don't have them, enjoy the film. That's it. That's or, you know, it. there's plenty of people go to coffee shops on their own. Maybe there's like a local place that you go to say on your, when you're, you know, you just want to read a book or something, you go there on your own. There's nothing yes. wrong with that. So maybe you can help her find somewhere in her neighborhood, yeah. do you think? And it's about getting that balance also. So your confidence grows again, isn't mm -hmm. it? So maybe, you know, you do a spot of shopping, go to the coffee shop within the shops and yeah. then start venturing out from there. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Okay, and like I said, if you are a couple, for example, don't think, oh, I'm not going to invite my single friend <laughs> around because it's going to make her feel worse. She's going to see me and my partner together and she's just going to remind her of being with, you know, her, her ex. But actually, there, there was something that a, a divorced woman wrote, and this is what she said. Uh, she said some of her happiest, less fraught times were with her married friends who just asked her to show up, plop down on the sofa, drink a little wine and stay for dinner. So actually, it's something mm -hmm. that they... 
they enjoy. Yes, I mean, I know you yes. spoke about sort of the large gathering, but even if it's just with you and your partner, they, they enjoy it as yeah. well. And it's about keeping it real, respecting boundaries at the same time, and having just pure, clean fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. So, okay, we're coming to the end of our programme today. So I think the underlying message throughout this whole thing is, you know, obviously, you know, you can... Things will get better, first of yes. all. Yes. But also, think of others during this time. It's, it's really important. There's plenty of people that are feeling a bit down. They've lost someone. They're missing someone. There's people that don't know how to cope. And just a few kind words from you or just even an email or phone call just to see if they're okay can make all the difference. Big difference. So please don't... Mm. I know it's kind of easy to get wrapped up in the hype of Christmas and, you know, doing all your shopping and preparing your dinner and everything like that. But just spare a thought for others that may need some, you know, a little bit of support over this time. Five minutes. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't have to take long. All right. So we have reached the end. So join me again on Friday where we'll be talking about hosting the perfect Christmas dinner where I went on location to learn to cook a traditional Christmas meal, but also an extremely healthy one and also one on a budget as well, but it was absolutely delicious. So that will be on Friday. And for now, thank you, Hazel. Pleasure. Hopefully to see you again soon. Pleasure. Certainly. And bye-bye to everyone at home as well. We'll see you next time. And if you want more information about the show, visit chriscbshow.tv. Bye-bye for now. Please do come along and visit this place. It's great because you get really get... And guys, if you do want something more adventurous, if you want to have some really fun time, so, um, what else can I ask? Uh, they can visit, um, sorry, uh, they can go to visitleevalley.org.uk where they can. <laughs> Three. Sorry. <laughs> You've been through just way too much today, Chris. <laughs> Three. I tell you what, we'll, we'll give it. To <laughs> Don't! I'm gonna, go I'm gonna be worse. Alright. <laughs> okay. Three.